Judge Deskins. Here. Master Danderson. Here. Master Murphy. Here. Master Robinson. Here. Master Dotson will be here, according to Jeannie. Master Varney. Here, according to Jeannie. Neil, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Billy Carico. You can. Yeah, Billy's the uh, manager at Teleworks. He's yep. here going to give and the court a court a, uh, an update on, on what's going on up at Teleworks. Yeah, I've got one. Thank you guys again for the chance to come and address you this evening. And uh, thank you guys again. I know a lot of people have been working hard these last few weeks in this room, inside this room, uh, throughout our county, making sure everybody was safe and prepared. And I, I just want to say we appreciate that. Um, I'm sure it's been said time and time again. We're here with Teleworks today. Uh, we're celebrating uh, our accomplishment of breaking over 50 jobs brought to the county through uh, the support of the county and through the hardworking men and women of the county, amen. So um, with that said, I would just like to say that there is a, a flyer in that handout and we have a great opportunity coming up. Usually all our interviews are done online uh, either through Skype, video chat, uh, FaceTime, some form that way. We actually have a company coming down from Michigan, uh, Kelly Services, Kelly Connect. They're going to interview our people face-to-face. -face. It's a great opportunity for them. Uh, most of our jobs, the entry-level jobs will start out at $9, 10 $11 an hour. Kelly has actually upped that to where they're starting out at $14 an hour. In a year, they're making $16 an hour from the house. Uh, and we have at least 12 to 13 of my clients that work for Kelly already. So they like hiring our people, our residents. Uh, they work well with them. They see that we have a workforce that's ready to work. Uh, so if you know anyone who wants to get into teleworking and wasn't ready to do it at an entry level position, this is a great step up for them from the $9, $10 an hour to the, uh, they say 15 to 17 in a year. That's 14 hired in. Uh, so I think that's a really good opportunity for them. Uh, it continues to grow our region, con continues to grow our business at Teleworks. Um, it's just a great opportunity. So again, I encourage anybody. Uh, just some other news. I got some pictures of there of people who have set up their homes ready to work here in Pike County. Um, I've got to go out to the courthouse in Phelps and at Belfry. Had a great turnout there. Uh, looking for some more uh, participants that way. Would love to reach out to the community in any way that you guys see uh, that I could do that anyway, just let me know and, and we will organize those events, continue to reach out in, in uh, our surrounding communities, Phelps, Belfry, uh, like to get down 23 some and, and reach out that way as well. Uh, just let me know what I can do. I thank you guys for your time. Hey, I got just a quick question, yeah. just curiosity. Uh, 54 employees? 52. 52. Yeah. Of the 52, how, what percentage is used in your facility over at Town Mountain compared to the percentage working Most, from home? Pretty much all of our uh, people have transitioned home. We are empty right now, so we can definitely take more people. If you can't uh, work at home, if, if the internet um, isn't up to you yet, or, or for some reason you can't have it at your house, we do have space available for that. Uh, we would really encourage people to, to use that. We are kind of lucky here in Pike County, very blessed to, to have uh, internet access that a lot of the other counties that we work in do not have. Um, I know some of the local companies that they've released packages for a hundred meg internet and that is far and above uh, what a lot of other counties we work in have available. Uh, so a lot of people don't, as long as they are financially able, they are transitioning home. And again, we offer that first month free uh, at our Johns Creek facility to work if, if you cannot work at home, if you can't make that happen. Right now we don't have anybody up there. I would like to see that change. Um, but. The point of it is to, to get people to transition home, and they are doing that and uh, seem to really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Billy, you was over at uh, Belfry last week. Did you get any good prospects over there? I know you didn't get a whole lot there, but. Yeah, we had about eight people come through, which is good. I mean, that's about what you can handle in a day, sitting down, doing a resume and, and an application. Yeah, we had some really great prospects. Good, really, good. really good people coming over, coming through. Billy, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Approval to execute the standard form of space license agreement for the temporary use of facilities for the American National Red Cross. Uh, John Doug, would you give us some details? I'm sorry, Doug, I was uh, speaking with Maggie Anderson. Where are we? Second reading? Uh, no, first one. Red Cross. Oh, the Red Cross. All yes. Right. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize to you and the court. Uh, uh, Master Anderson and I were in some serious discussions here on the side, but uh, in any event, that is a lease for the uh, Red Cross office. It's on the fourth floor of the detention center building. I don't know what the formal name for that is, the old Hall of Justice. Uh, uh, but in any event, they've been up there for, uh, I guess, two, three years, haven't they, Doug, uh, occupying that same small office. It's about a 10 by 10 and a storage area adjacent to it. It's a perfect location for the Red Cross, which does so much good work for the people of Pike County and for Pike County government. When we have uh, disasters and people are in need, uh, they're right there behind, uh, beside our emergency services personnel, the 911 people, and it's just an ideal place for them. Uh, Doug, you don't have any problem with them being there. I don't. I've looked at the lease. The lease is fine legally. It has a 90-day opt-out provision. If we ever want to do that, I don't know why we would uh, in the immediate future, but uh, I would recommend that the uh, court uh, approve uh, you entering into this lease, Judge, on behalf of the court. Thank you. I need a motion to approve. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Anderson, yes. Mr. Johnson, yes. Mr. Murphy, yes. Mr. Robinson, Mr. Dotson, yes. Mr. Varney, yes. Judge Deskin, yes. Second reading and adoption of the amendments of the Administrative Code, Section 490, Employee Employment Conditions, Administ like Administrative that. Personnel. John Doug, would you give us a reading of the Second ordinance. Yes, Judge, this is the second reading of a, an amendment to the Administrative Code, Section 490, Employment Conditions, Administrative Personnel. And Judge, basically what this uh, does is take administrative personnel back to where they were in uh, the code in 1995 before it was changed. Uh, uh, provision three of that uh, 1995 code said all administrative personnel serve at the pleasure of the court and may be suspended from their duties without pay by the judge executive without cause and may be dismissed by the court upon uh, the recommendation of the judge executive. Now that is the essential change. This uh, amendment takes out other provisions which conflict with that. And what we're doing, Judge, uh, Kentucky is a state which uh, has employment terminable at will. Uh, any person who is an employee of any business in Kentucky is an employee terminable at will absent some union contract or other written contract. Uh, doesn't matter what uh, kind of employment it is. Now, our hourly employees are under the UMWA union contract. That contract is written into the code. That does not affect hourly employees. It simply takes administrative employees back to where they were in 1995. And so it will take, Judge, your motion, since there's an amendment uh, to the administrative code, a second and a majority vote. Hey, Judge, real quick, if you don't care. John, can I ask a question? I had a couple of calls. I know the answer to this, but I want to... Uh, I want every county employee to understand it. It's still, judge has to recommend it, and it is still the majority of the court before the employee is terminated, correct? That is correct, and we're only talking again about administrative personnel. We're not talking about hourly employees, the same uh, 
uh, rules uh, of the code, uh, the provisions of the code still apply to hourly employees. Are we, did we, did we have the first reading last meeting? Was it when I had to leave early? Yes. Okay. Are we taking any away, uh, I've just, I've just glanced at this, like the grievance procedures, are we striking that? It strikes entirely any grievance procedure and makes administrative personnel employees at will. So the, the grievance procedures for them is not, won't be effective anymore? That's correct. Okay. All right. I'll make the motion. I need a second. Is there a problem with it, with any uh, anybody that uh, don't want to, you know, we discussed this and and uh, it only affects the administrative, it don't affect the hourly, so I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Master Anderson. No. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Barney. No. Judge Deskins. Yes. Approval to apply and execute all documents for a waste tire grant. Bobby Mullins, would you comment on that? This is a annual grant that we usually do. It comes back from the environment cabinet and it's just a, uh, it is just a grant that we can use to, to help to dispose of used tires. So that's all that that is. All right, I need a motion. Okay. Roll call please. Master Sanders, yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Barney. Yes. Judge Deskin. Yes. Acknowledge of receipt of the 2017-2018 proposed budget as prepared by the Judge Pike County Judge here. Executive. Judge, if, if yes. you don't care, let's skip that till after executive session so John that can be here to be present fine. it. Right. And, and before you go to the wording of the bids, I'd like to give the court an update if I can. Okay. If you don't care. Uh, we don't, we don't have any bids, do we? All right. Patrick's road work. You care if I... Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Second. Wait. No, go ahead. Get, get that over with. Okay. Uh, All right. I need a motion. We got a motion. We got it. No, wait, okay, wait a minute. You want me to do... Wait, yeah. do? No, go ahead. Master's roll call. Right. Motion a second. Roll a motion count. A second roll call, please. Sorry about Master that. Anderson. Yes. yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Barney. Yes. Judge Deskin. Yes. I need a mo. I need to see. Uh, Magic road work. I need a motion to accept Magic road work. We just did. Just. That's, that's what that was, Judge. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Before you go to Master's comments, can I? I like to update the court on something. Last year, I started looking at our insurance premiums. I thought our buildings were over assessed. I thought our vehicle or equipment and our building contents was overvalued. Frankie, Stacy, myself, Doug, Doug Tackett, and a few individuals got together and we started looking at our assessments. After, uh, after reassessing our values, we, we sit down today with Keiko and our local rep. Uh, Master uh, Barney was present, John, Doug, myself, John, Doug, Frankie, and we got our new numbers and I wanted to share with the court what they were. Uh, last year, our total premiums was right at $2 million. It was one, one million nine hundred and some change. Uh, by reassessing our values, just to give you some, some values, we lowered our auto values, which is our vehicles, our fire equipment and all that, from 15.1 million down to 7.2 million, a 53% decrease in the value. Uh, our, our workers' comp, our estimated payroll was $9 million last year. We had it down to $7.4 million this year. But by working together, we took our total premiums from right at $2 million last year to $1.6 million and some change this year, which was a total savings of over $300,000. What that means is when we cut checks this year, we don't have to, we'd be $300,000 less than what we had to cut last year. Now, in 2018, Keiko's going to come in and they're going to reappraise all of our buildings. 
and when they reappraise our buildings, I, I, I really believe our assessments on, on our property is going to go down as well, but that can't happen for a few more months. But I want to let the court know about the savings. Thank you, Judge. All right. Uh, Magic comments. Uh, Judge, only I got, I got a petition here from some senior citizens at the Pikeville Center. I think, I don't know, Diane's not here, but I reckon they'd cut maybe the number of hours and they, I met with them today and they just asked me to drop that off to the, the judge's office. It's just a, a bunch of seniors, from some seniors. of the seniors. I think they maybe cut the hours for some of the workers. They, they told me I wasn't, I'm not completely up to snuff on what it is, but I think they were a little concerned maybe about they weren't gonna have enough hours or have the workers at the Pikeville Center. I hope they're a little better than Phelps. You know, they cut a lot of them hours over there. <laughs> uh, I Ain't think much were, left over there to cut. Maybe 30 hours they, they were cutting a week. So they've got 60, 61 signatures, I believe. That's all I have. All right, Magistrate Johnson, do you have any comments? No, I don't. We'll one thing, Judge, I believe the coal service tax is going to go up pretty, pretty good. Because if I ran home every time you're turning around now, you're meeting a coal truck or passing one. So it must be picking up pretty doggone good. Yeah, I see a little active. That train runs behind me. Used to, used, I used to complain, but now when it blows out horns, I clap my hand. <laughs> All right, Leo, you have any comments? Jack Darrell, did you check on getting them trucks fixed over on Upper Concord? Yeah, I, I called uh, H2O. Uh, the guy owns it. I tried to call him originally, and I didn't get a hold of him, and I got hold of one of his uh, key men. And, and then uh, the Lockhart boy called me afterwards, and they said they'd go up there and uh, fix them temporary right now and next week which would be this week. I called him last Friday and he said uh, they'd go up there and get a hold of a paving contractor and fix it permanently. Okay. Uh, Hillman? I don't have anything other than I thought we were gonna change administrative code and then now I guess there was some that didn't wanna change it, but you know, I didn't wanna make a change to bother anybody. I know it was one of the county attorney's recommendation and the court agreed that something needed to be done on on uh, giving the judge the say on administrative code. I think he's the one that makes the decisions on how the court's going to be run. And the early people, I don't think it's going to affect them anyway. No. And I don't think it'll, it'll bother any administrative people. It's just some, some things that uh, we probably need to look into. And I'd like to say I'm just satisfied with all the things that we're getting done in District uh, 5. Uh, the men are, are really putting the work at, and I'm short-handed. They're pothole patching a little bit right now. And uh, I'll leave it there until we go over a budget, and then we'll maybe talk a little bit after a while. Judge, when are you going to start working on the budget? Did you already start preparing work on the budget? Do what now? You got a budget already ready? For yeah, yeah. Budget? Jonda has it prepared. She's probably working on it right now. She's she got the first draft. Uh, it looks pretty good, or what did you think about it? It's good, Chick. Our, our estimated revenue is is coming in right where we right where we projected it to be. Our estimated expenditures is under. Uh, I. I I really think that this is going to be a, a very good budget year. I've already sat down with, with meetings with John Doug and, and John Doug. We, we met in this very courtroom on, and went over some of the expenditures. And uh, I, I'll tell you this, I made the comment then, and I'll say it now, it, it, was, it was a pleasure and a blessing to be in it because it's the first time since I've been here that we wasn't discussing cuts and savings. It's just about getting our budget together presenting the right budget in, in the most pr perfective way for the county. So uh, uh, it's good shape. Pastor Johnson, uh, I don't have my budget timeline, maybe Jeannie does before, but uh, May the 1st by operation of state law, 
that budget, the judge's budget, has to be submitted to the court. Mm -hmm. Now that, as you remember from time past, is not the final budget. That has to be done, I believe, by June I think the 1st. June 1st, yes. And first so we, we have to get it down to Frankfurt by June the 1st. So, so what you're going to see and what you're going to get eventually uh, no, may not be the same, but uh, the court will have plenty of time to have input on the I just want to see what budget. we had to go to go through. You know, okay, I, you're going to see it to today, I think. We've had enough of this hell for the last four years. This time amen, have, brother, this time. amen. Let's <laughs> see y'all a bit. Hillman? <laughs> yeah, I just... Uh, you know, the last couple of weeks we've had hillbilly days and everything seemed to go good there. And I was really pleased with all that. And then uh, this past Saturday, the demonstrations and stuff we had, I talked to, to uh, the Sheriff Rodney Scott and, and they had a couple little incidents, but nothing like what could have happened, I think. So I was really pleased with that. And I, and I want to congratulate the, the Sheriff Department and those deputy sheriffs, the state police, all the police officers and the way they conduct themselves in Pike County. I, I'm, I'm really proud of that, I really am. Uh, this past Saturday morning, Judge, I got to go to Big Creek area. They have that community litter pickup every year in uh, uh, Rock House and, and uh, Mead House and Dick's Fork and uh, Open Fork and uh, Stratton Fork. And uh, they had a uh, get together for lunch at the Presbyterian Church there at Pigeon Roost at 12 o'clock. And uh, we got to meet with those people. I met uh, Mr. and Miss Grossel. He's, uh, he's 91. She's 89. They were out picking up litter. And I, I tell you what, just an inspiration, really, to be with those. And then Sunday evening, me and my wife drove through those little communities and stuff. And I tell you, they were really proud of their community, the way they cleaned it up. And it did. It looked real nice. It, was, it, it felt like home. And that, you know, and, the, and uh, I, I'm just, my hat goes off to of those people and what they do and their commitment to that. Uh, one of them made the comment, we, we still have to do this to, to, two times a year, but we're not picking up as much garbage as we used to. You know, so that, that was really good, and I was really proud of that, Judge. Thank you. All right. Treasurer business, she's not here right now. Executive session, would you give us a KRS? Yes, Judge, at this time I'd like to make a motion that we go into executive session and in accordance of uh, uh, KRS 61.810, paragraph C, discuss proposed or pending litigation, and paragraph F, Pacific personnel. Roll call, please. Mr. Anderson, Master Johnson, yes. Master Murphy, yes. Master Robinson, yes. Master Dotson. Mr. Barney? Yes. Judge Deskin? Yes. The court will be in recess for a few minutes. Court come to order. All right. Uh, Ryan, you're... Yeah, a couple of uh, things. Approval to hire Dalton Little as a loader for solid waste at Robles Creek at a 2H rate of pay, effective 4-24-17. Uh, we bid at a welder position at Ford Mountain. Uh, several county employees bid it on it. I want to, uh, judge is going to recommend we pass on that to get some of these individuals certified to see if they're uh, certified welders, and we'll take this up at the next court meeting. That's the judge's recommendations. These are my recommendations and my motion. I need a second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Bernie. Yes. Judge Desk. Yes. All right. For approval and discussion of health insurance for spouses of elected officials. And that is they are paid out of their on out of their personal income. I need a motion to approve. Judge, yeah, before you do that, I, I I know everybody understands it, but I think you probably need to let Brian explain what the purpose of this is so the public will know what's going I'll on. I'll do my very best, Hillman. Uh, uh, the, the county, as everybody knows, last year cut the family health insurance out. Uh, 
right now we just offer to employees only, no spouses, no children. What the judge is asking this court to do is to allow elected officials only be put on the uh, insurance here at the county, which will be 100% paid out of the elected officials income. It will be no, no cost to the county whatsoever. Uh, the reason why just elected officials, the reason why you don't open it up for all county employees is if under the Obamacare, if the county offers health insurance for the spouse, the only option that spouse has is to take the county insurance. They will not be allowed to go to any exchange or get any kind of relief for health insurance. That being said, m majority of our county workers, spouses right now is on Obamacare or they're going to an exchange to get some kind of relief. And we do not want to take that away from them. This is just an elected official only. It's a tier. Uh, no county employees other than elected officials will have the option for the spouse insurance to buy the insurance. How much is it? Uh, roughly, I think nine hundred dollars for the for the spouse coverage. Nine hundred a month. So yeah, roughly. I, I forget, but it's as far as the actual number. And what the problem is 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 you know, Bill, you can talk a little bit about it. I mean, you know, he just wants the. the like I said, it's elect officials only. Does that make sense, Hillman? Well, yeah, I understood it a while ago. Yeah. I, what it is. Make sure that the people know what, right. what's happening. You know, we I want them to know it. I've got more to say. My wife's insurance is a little over $1,200 just for her. And she cannot go to this hospital over here with that insurance. And her doctor won't accept her insurance. She had to go to Lexington to, and her insurance is good to go to Lexington. But it's, it's because the money will be out with withhold. It. I'll either write them a check, or I will. She can the treasurer can cut it out of my uh, uh, out of my income. Now, any elected official that decides to let their spouse take it, if the court votes on allowing this, would be uh, on the expense of the elected official. Now, I can afford to pay the insurance, but she's driving me wild over having to pay so much and she can't go to the hospital here. Now, it's because there's two kinds of plans. An individual cannot buy a PPO. Right. It's a HMO, and the, uh, the PMC, Bible Medical Center, does not take a HMO. Okay. And you have do. to really actually have a company plan to get right now, and I don't know if it's because of Obamacare or whatever, to get a PPO. You just can't use the insurance. Even if it costs you $2,000 a month, it's worthless, really, because you can't use it locally. Well, and, the and court, if, you, if, if, you the court, if the court don't, don't approve it, I have no problem with it. Bill, I think we're going to approve it. We're just trying to... Uh, we're going to approve it, I think. We're just trying to explain... To the people what's going on right if we offer it to the employees then they lose all options of uh, picking up any kind of extra insurance well i don't want to create and we're not going to do that we're not going to knock them out of getting their insurance but i'll make a motion bill uh you know uh i don't think it's no wrong in it the insurance man explained it to us and i don't think anybody can afford 1200 dollars a month for well, I mean, if the if the court doesn't want it, that don't bother me a bit. But my wife, she talks to me every day about it. I pay all of this insurance, and I can't go to the I hospital here. <laughs> you second it? Yeah. yeah. You got a roll call. Roll call, please. Master Danderson. No. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes, but Master I'm not going to use it, though. Okay. Yeah. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Barney? Yes. Judge Deskins? Yes. Did Anderson pass it? Say no. Mm -hmm. Said no. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, whatever. But I need to talk to you, Jeff. I need to uh, tell you a little thing or two after this court so you don't care to listen. Okay. All right. Be glad to. It won't be about this insurance. That's fine. I'll stick around. 
All right, let's see. Uh, have you, we've approved uh, your, your insurance? Yeah. Okay, personnel. Let's see. Commissioner Districts. Uh, public comment. No. Oh, discussion of Commissioner's District. Okay, John Doug. Judge, uh, before I get into the Commissioner District's issue, let me uh, bring this court and uh, the public up to date, for that matter, with regard to the status of the lawsuit filed by members of this court against you uh, contesting the legal issue of combining two petitions to make one legally sufficient uh, uh, petition, those two petitions, one being for an election in 2015, one being for an election in 2016. Very simple legal issue. Can you do that or can you not do that? Uh, I've looked at uh, uh, precedent, authority on that issue. There, there is a serious legal question and I don't care if a thousand people intervene, that is always going to be the legal question. There's really no dispute as to the facts. But that has been over in the Pike Circuit Court. It was drawn uh, initially by Judge Combs. I got an order in the mail today. I think it was probably entered on Friday. Uh, Judge Combs has sent it over to uh, Division Number 1, which would be Judge Coleman. I do not know what Judge Coleman will do. He may very well recuse, and then a special judge would need to be appointed. That remains to be seen. So that's the uh, status of uh, the lawsuit. Uh, I still believe that there is a very valid legal question, uh, and I'll just take the barbs as the lawyer for this court. Uh, I'm used to that. I'm a big boy and know how to put my big boy pants on, Jackie Darrell. Now, having said that and brought you up to date, uh, let me correct uh, one of uh, our chimney corner lawyers here said we had to redistrict by a certain time and it's coming up and I think the clerk of this court's been bothered by a lot of people, not bothered, but contacted by a lot of people wanting to know when we're going to redistrict. Let me tell you what the law says. KRS 670 uh, says that this will be done by the first Monday in January of the year of the election, which will change the administration. Now that would be the first Monday of January 2018. So we've got a lot of time to create these commission districts. However, even in light of the pending lawsuit, which we may win, uh, you never, I've told this court, and I've been honest with this court, you never know what a court a court of law will do with regard to a legal issue like this. So I think it behooves this court, uh, being the responsible uh, representatives of the people that you are, to move forward in case the worst were to happen with this lawsuit. And therefore, I think it behooves this court to go ahead and set the commission districts. Now having said that, Judge, this is a little bit different than this court may be used to. This court is used to determining uh, magisterial districts. The law is altogether different. There you have a committee which reports to this court. This court can amend the uh, report of the committee or can even reject that uh, uh, report. Here, that is not the case. This, this court does not have a vote on the creation of the commission districts. Uh, uh, KRS, again, 67.060, provides that this will be done by the county judge executive. Again, by the first Monday in the year of the election, which will change the administration, first Monday of 2018. So being the good uh, representatives that you are, I would, behoove, uh, I would suggest that we need to move forward with this. The plan is not going to be liked by anyone, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, people are going to find fault with it. Uh, uh, citizens of this county are going to find fault with it. Uh, uh, maybe some members of this court are going to not, not be happy with it. But there has to be a plan, and we need to move forward. Having said that, 
And we do have an executive order that the judge has signed creating districts. I hope, Frankie, you've got it on the screen. Uh, these are the uh, districts you've got a, uh, you've got in your, each of your files a plat along with the uh, precinct uh, names, numbers, and population, total population of each district. Let me say with regard to these magisterial districts, the law requires, KRS 67060, it's right there in that one little bundle, that these districts be as nearly equal in population as practicable. Now, the boundary lines are such that they ha that each precinct within the, these districts, individual districts, have to be contiguous. You cannot cross a precinct. You can't go across one and then start your district again. Everything has to be contiguous. So that's what I've done. And uh, before I read the executive order, I want you're, you're looking at the plat uh, that, that, uh, that represents what the judge's executive order will do. I want to go through some of the, and I, and I want to say that I appreciate Charles Maynard, who's in the courtroom. What we would have done without Charles, I do not know. Charles, thank you, and I know Brian and Judge uh, joins in that, and Doug uh, is on your staff. You got a good man there. You need to hold on to him. Uh, he, has, he has done yeoman's work on this issue, but I just want to show you some of the things that we have gone through. I'll speak up and let my voice project across this courtroom, having left my microphone. Early on, it was suggested, it's simple, John Doug, Judge, Brian, all you have to do is, we've got six districts, you go to three commission districts, take one and two, put them together, take three and four, put them together, take five and six, put them together. You don't know the number of times my friends have come to me, uh, people who may not be my friends have come to me and said, why don't you just do it that? that that's easy, that's simple. Well, we couldn't do it, Charles. When we looked at it, there were a number of problems, not the least of which is we couldn't get these districts, one and two, three and four, five and six, to be as nearly equal as practicable. The courts, the courts have ruled that you can have a 10% variance, 5% up, 5% down. Now, if you put one and two together, somebody would say, well, they were equal when you set them up, uh, uh, three, four, they were all supposed to be equal, but they all had that variance built in. And when you combine the two, the variance went in excess of the allowable variance. I just want to show you, and I hope the, the TV can pick this up. And Julie, if you need to see, change, uh, change seats there. This, this was a representation done by Charles of what... Uh, of what one and two, three and four, five and six would look like. I want you to look at what humongous district five and six would have been. It would have run from West Virginia, Virginia, Woodman, uh, Hillman, uh, Pawpaw, all the way to the Martin County line over here and all the way down to US 23 here to Mouth of Stone Coast. Now, that is preposterous, folks. Uh, those are not workable districts. Yeah, uh, the, and they wouldn't work anyway. Uh, number one, under that scenario, and let me, I want to prove a point to you why this you couldn't do this. Number one would have had 24,538 people. It would have been the largest. The smallest would have been three and four, it would have had 19,873 people, a variance of almost 5,000 people. That is not permissible under the law of Kentucky. Too much variance, and that is a ridiculous scenario to have to go here. And by the way, here's this red boundary is the city of Pikeville. The city of Pikeville would have been in one, two, and three, it would have had, it would have been in all three commission districts. Theoretically, then, you could have three commissioners 
who lived in the city boundary of Pikeville, along with the county judge, possibly. Now, I just point that out. That was the first scenario we looked at, and I think you understand why it wouldn't work. Now, I didn't bring all the scenarios that we looked at. I just wanted to give you an example that this was not done by Judge Deskins willy-nilly, and those of us who helped Judge Deskins. We tried to do this on a very orderly basis. Here's another scenario that we looked at. Notice that was map one. This is map two. It essentially <laughs> runs one way over into Pine Creek. Uh, that's one, the tan color. The, the green, uh, the blue down here would be two. But I want you to look Look at District 3 there. My goodness. Uh, and again, there's about a 4,000 person uh, variance there. Would not have worked. You still had the same problem. Basic, down here's Elkhorn City. Over here's Pikeville and Stone Cold. Uh, and over here, here's Woodman. Poplow down here in Virginia. The road runs in and out of Virginia, Jackie Darrow. Look what a district that would have been. And think of, uh, think of it if you're a commissioner trying to take care of roads in that kind of district. Now we looked at, I don't know, uh, Judge, how many we did look at. But finally we came up with this one. Judge Deskins liked this one. And this is what he has chosen. The only thing I don't like about it is this little finger running down into the green, but, uh, but notice how compact your districts are here. <coughs> and I think that's good from the standpoint of road work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's good from the standpoint of representation of people, and Judge Deskins agreed. So that's the districts that the judge has chosen. The KRS provides that he can do this by executive order. He has signed an executive order to that effect, and I'll read it to you at this time, and then I'll answer any questions that the magistrates might have, or anyone else for that matter. All right, this is uh, executive order number 04.27.17.012. Executive Order of Judge Executive William N. Deskins. Whereas a majority of the votes cast at the general election held on November 8, 2016, pursuant to KRS 67.050, were cast in favor of the physical court being composed of the county judge executive and three commissioners. And whereas in such case, KRS.060 provides in pertinent part, the county judge executive shall not later than the first Monday in January in the year of the regular election for county officers, and as I told you, that would be the first Monday in January 2018, and continue it. Divide the county into three districts as nearly equal in population as practical, and shall establish the boundary lines of each of the three commissioner districts so that each district is an unbroken area and not split or divided by another commissioner district. And listen to this, this is important. Whereas the undersigned is mindful that there is a pending lawsuit concerning the legality of the commissioner form of government being placed upon the ballot, even so, the undersigned feels that it is best to move forward until a court ruling is made upon the validity of that election. Now, therefore, it is hereby ordered that pursuant to KRS 67.060, Pike County shall be divided into three commissioner districts as follows. Now, you can look at the map on the screen and, uh, and follow along. Uh, and this is gonna take a while, because, but I need to read this in its entirety. These are the commissioner districts. District one, precinct number A101, Bessie Riddle Arnold, population 959. 
Precinct number A109, Brushy. Population 825. Precinct number C111, Burning Fork. Population, and by the way, this is population in terms of voters, voters only. Uh, Burning Fork, population 1593. Uh, precinct number A107, Bypass, population 1070. Uh, precinct number A106, Coal Run, population 1823. Precinct number D107, Garden Village, population 415. Precinct number D102, Greasy Creek, population 1145. Precinct number A102, Hurricane, population 974. Precinct number B107, Island Creek, population 1310. Precinct number E108, Joe's Creek, population 404. Precinct number A110, Lower Johns Creek, population 950. Precinct number A104, Lower Pike, population 1801. Um, precinct number E107, Mita, population 1512. <coughs> precinct number A105, Myers Towers, population 1252. Precinct number A108, Mullins School, population 1351. Uh, precinct number D106, New Shelby, population 315. Precinct number A103, Pikeville High School, uh, population 1222, 1222. Precinct number C105, Raccoon, population 994. Precinct number C112, Stone Cold, population 629. Precinct number D103, Upper Cloy, population uh, 1,054, precinct uh, number D110, York, population 619. That is Commissioner District 1. It has a total population of 22,217. District number 2, precinct number D111, Ashcamp, 1,783. Uh, C104, Belcher, 567. B101, Caney, 2,178. B105, Dorton, 1,702. Uh, C103, Elkhorn City Hall, 1,114. B106, Elwood, 1,619. D109, Hillier, 455. D108, Henry Clay, 730. C107, Lick Creek, 395. B104, Long Fork, 1,298. C110, one, Looney, 615. D104, Marabone, 544. D101, Millard, 1,735. C101, Mouthguard, 795. B103, Old Shelby, 2001. C-106, Rasnick, 617. D-105, Rockhouse, 725. C-102, El Upper Elkhorn, 726. B-102, Jaeger, 2,461. Total population, uh, 22,060. That's, that's district number two. District number three. Uh, F-101, Belfry, 743. F-104, Bevan School, 1,979. Uh, E-102, Blackberry, 876. E-103, Deskins, 1,831. F-103, Dr. J.E. Johnson, 1,133. Uh, C-109, Feds Creek, 1,194. E-104, uh, Freeburn. Uh, 1006, C1, uh, C108, Grapevine, 851, F107, Huddy, 976, F102, Lower Big Creek, 1008, uh, E1005, uh, Majestic, 1319, E109, uh, Macar, 804, F108, Old Pond, 1789, uh, e-101, Phelps, uh, 1,323, F-105, uh, F-105, Runyon, 1,373, 
F-106, Turkey Creek 1,531, and E-106, Wolford 1,012. Total population of 20,748. The total population voter-wise in Pike County in those three districts is 65,025. The, diff the difference from high, which I believe is uh, District 1, to the low, which is District 2, no, I'm sorry, District 3, is 1,469 well Charles within the variance allowable by the court. That's it. The only other thing I will say, Master Barney, you will notice that under uh, this uh, executive order, which is entered today, the 20, or on the 27th day of April, actually, 2017, uh, the city of Pikeville is entirely within uh, Commission District 1. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that any master has. Any, Don, look like you still got five about halfway in the county. Well, I know ain't much you can do about it, people. In the scanner. Uh, what, the, the whole size, you know, the size of the county look like the blue is just about almost. Well, it is. But, but that's the way it is. The thing is, it's not based on size. District 3 has the lowest number of population. And that's what the, I, I feel bad about that. Actually, we looked at a scenario, uh, uh, Master Dawson, that had Brushy into that. And we took Brushy out. Uh, to make uh, uh, District 3 a little more manageable on a uh, on num on number of road miles. And I don't know how this all works out uh, in terms of road lots. I think, Jeff, uh, looks like uh, you've still just got one in Commission District 1. Looks like uh, Chick and up in your area and, and Kenneth, uh, maybe there's, uh, there's Belcher and... Uh, what do we got? Uh, Robinson Creek and then the one up on Marabone. So there's three in the green area here. And over here in the blue area, Hillman, you've got uh, Phelps and uh, Belfry. So you got two there. You got two, three, and one, actually, which makes six. Uh, it would be good to be able to look at this in terms of road mileage. And, and we kind of did that, didn't we, Charles, we, by, by compacting the district. Uh, you look at some of those scenarios uh, running from the Floyd County line to the Letcher County line, from uh, Pawpaw to, to, to Martin County, <laughs> across Pike County, or to the mouth of Stone Cold, it really got ridiculous, Hillman. So I think Judge Deskins has done a good job. That's my opinion. Uh, like I say, I'm sure there will be people in the county that won't be happy, and I've I'll make a prediction right now. We'll see what kind of future teller I am. They'll go back to the magistrate form in four years and be so happy to do that. It'll, it won't be funny. That is what it is, John. Well, I'd uh, like to say this. Floyd County had their commissioners, I think, about five terms ago. And they got so unhappy with who would grade the, uh, the snow and put in a pipe, a uh, ditch line pipe, and do all the things. The three commissioners may not have anything, maybe they're all three doctors. Uh, and they don't know a darn thing about what the public needs out there, and then they couldn't be uh, still till they, the next term come up, they went back to the magistrates. Lasted so, four years in Floyd County, Judge. Four, four years, and they couldn't wait to get back. Clark County just went back from commissioner uh, to magistrate. So, hey, you know, commissioner has its valid points. Uh, uh, but we all understand why this push was made. And by the way, while I'm, I'm on commission form of government, there is one other duty that this court needs to undertake by the first Monday in January 2018, by statute, you all have to set the commissioner's salaries or the magistrate's salaries if we prevail in court. One way or another, it has to be set. So I have hand, uh, given a handout to you that uh, 
that Representative Harris had uh, the Legislative Research Commission uh, prepare for him. It has all of the, uh, uh, the counties who had the commission form a government together with the salary of their commissioners, and they, they range all over the place. But I think, again, in fairness to the people of this county, uh, in fairness to good government, uh, we need to go ahead and probably set those salaries. Uh, if, we, if we prevail in court, then we'll set the uh, magistrate salaries. But, uh, uh, I, and if we prevail in court, what we're doing here today will be a nullity. It'll be null and void. won't mean a thing. And so... I just want you to know that because uh, I feel like we need to move forward with this, and I think you all agree. It doesn't mean that we don't think we've got a case. We do. Uh, I'm sure the opposition doesn't. Uh, I'm used to that after 45 years of law practice, and, uh, you know, that's, that's why we have courts, and that's why we have lawyers. So I want you to be thinking about that, and I think probably the best thing this court can do is go ahead and set salaries. Uh, the most amazing thing is if, if you set the commission salaries about what this, the magistrates of this court are making, the grand total of savings to Pike County, and I want the government waste people to hear this, would be around, Brian, $140,000, $50,000. Uh, this is a, a, a county with a $32 million budget. That is just not even a, that's not a percentage point of our total budget. And... Uh, and those people, those people, as we come upon uh, budget time, who advocate this and advocate that, need to look very closely at the good work this court is doing to hold down cost. I've watched it. I've watched you all. I've watched you bite the bullet on the occupational tax. You heard uh, our treasurer say uh, at our last meeting, I believe, John, that our operating budget is, what, 8 to $10 million, actual operating budget? I think it was 14.4, and you take seven or eight off for our payroll, because it was like right. 7.4, so we've only got right. about seven or eight operating budget. Now, know this. I want the public to know this. That occupational tax brings in 3 to $4 million a year. Now, where would we be without it? And those people who have condemned this court to hell over it are going to have to take a strong look at it someday down the road. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well, in my opinion, I had to have the feeling of the best for the people in the county was to keep the magistrates because, like I say, these commissioners, uh, what do they know about the service that the county needs for the districts? Plowing the snow, putting the drain pipe in, taking care of their roads, and so forth. And that, when somebody asked me about it, I said the magistrates are the best way to go. Judge, I think maybe Charles Maynard wanted to say something, and as hard as he worked uh, on this project for us, uh, want, I guess I've left out something, haven't I, Charles? I just wanted to uh, clarify where the population of each precinct comes from. It comes from the 2010 census. And that's what we use to... Uh, the population each precinct the census the uh, Pike County is a partnership with the US Census you know I send them their uh, mapping information and then in turn they use it into their system and every 10 years after they do the census they send the updated information back to us and uh, everything in Pike County is broken down into census blocks and inside each precinct, you could have, you know, 30, 40, 50 census blocks. And each one of those has got a population in it. And I just want to stress how important it is for everybody to, you know, fill out their census forms every year. And the last time I checked on the estimate, I think Pike County is probably going to be down 5 to 7 percent on population by 20, 2020 at the next census. So. I appreciate you pointing that out, Charles, and, and let me say this, uh, part of the unfairness about what we're doing here today is that very fact. Uh, 
since 2010, uh, Master Dawson, when you say that uh, a lot of people moved out of your mm -hmm. district uh, going to seek work, uh, Master Barney, I think, would probably say the same thing. But what you've got is an influx over here in one into the Pikeville area, right. which seems to be prospering. So. so probably after the 2020 census, you know, we have to look at this again and, and go from there. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, we can learn all this stuff, won't you? Here you go. Pardon? Should you get to it again? All right. Uh, now, let's see. Uh, uh, John, you got the thing, the thing business? Let's do the budget first, and then we'll go on to my business. Okay. Excuse me. Are you ready? You just need to ask the court to acknowledge receipt of the your proposed 1718 budget i need a motion to motion motion to acknowledge or second roll call please mr Anderson. yes mr johnson yes mr murphy yes mr robinson yes. mr dotson yes mr barney yes judge desk yes yes Okay, the first thing I handed out after the budget was from Donald Leathers. It's for the Court Facilities Local Government Reimbursement Form for the fiscal year 2018, which will run July 1, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. This is for the reimbursement on the Judicial Center estimated by AOC in four uh, quarterly payments. Uh, they're going to reimburse us $450,000. This just needs, this is a formula they go through based on the occupancy and everything, and they do pay 100% of everything. And on my last check, they backed up for the three years we've been over there and reimbursed me back for the telephones that they had been charging against us because those were actual elevator telephones, which they should have been paying for. That's good news. So, authorization for the judge to sign and submit to Donald Leathers. Motion. Roll call, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dodson. Yes. Mr. Barney. Yes. Judge Deskin. Yes. We have a volunteer accident policy at the animal shelter. This is for seven participants. I'll need to get a number to see if this is the same amount but we need to participate for a total renewal premium for 7117 to 7118 of 240 dollars or a little bit more if there's more volunteers at the animal shelter so they they will be covered and uh, hopefully that nobody gets bit again so this is why we have it we had this before yeah yes second Roll yeah, call, after please. that little kid got bit, we picked up volunteer policy. Yeah. Master Anderson. Master Anderson. In, the insurance at the animal shelter. Master, <laughs> Master Johnson. What's that? Yes. Yes. Master Murphy. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Barney. Yes. Judge Deskin. Uh, we need to give Bobby Mullins approval to attend the SWAC meeting June 7th through the 9th at Dale Hollow State Resort Park. Motion. Second. Roll call, please. 
Mr. Sanders? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Barney? Yes. Judge Jessica? Yes. Authorization whenever Paula gives us the okay that it's fixed. So we can go ahead and issue it. To C and J Builders Incorporated for the material and labor to redo the Little League dugout at Virgie that was hit by the windstorm, wasn't it? $6,600. And we do have the check back on that. We do. Less the deductible. On the insurance, you mean? Yes. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. We need a motion. I'll second Chick's motion. Uh, it was Leo's motion. Leo's motion. Chick, let Chick since it's his. Okay. Okay. Area. Okay. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Barney. Yes. Judge Jessica. Yes. Um, we need to give authorization to reimburse Scott Sykes for mileage and expenses as he's going to different uh, functions on behalf of the county and getting himself up to speed on grants and things of that nature. Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Sanders. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Mr. Bernie. Yes. Yes. Only thing I want to add, John, is I like to tell Scott, uh, use the county vehicle as much as you can. It's cheaper on the county to drive the county vehicle than reimburse. <coughs> and just, you know, keep the court informed on where you're going. I know you've done a good job with that. We appreciate the job you're doing. Just uh, just keep going, but keep us updated. Well, are we sure a volunteer is covered under county? Yes, I met with Keiko. Uh, volunteers covered under the, the insurance. And in touch and base with the budget just a little bit, um, we don't have all of our numbers. As a matter of fact, DLG just sent me a text while we were sitting here. They just got the report for the mineral severance tax Saturday, and they've worked all day to get the numbers. And Amy Barnes just sent it to me and said the mineral amount is $186,697.08. And if you'll remember, when we got the last check, we were already 49,000 over from what we projected. So this will make that about 236,000 over from what we projected. But cold check was 580 some thousand dollars, which was a, excuse me, $167,000 short. So between the two of them, we came out maybe 70,000 to the good. Good. Right. So I asked her, what does she think, we, how we should project for next fiscal year? And she told me to take the lowest and multiply it by four and decrease by 10%, better safe than sorry. And I yeah. said, on coal and mineral both. And she said, let her check with somebody tomorrow to give me a better idea. Because last year she told me to take the fourth quarter of coal and mineral, which is what we did of mineral, but coal we took the third. And if I'd have took an average of those two would have been on target. We were a little bit too high with the third quarter and we'd have been a little low with fourth, but we came in better than having to look at slicing and dicing again. Um, but there are other places within this budget that uh, Rodney's just got the unmined coal taxes to send out. So once I see how much that assessment was, we'll probably have to decrease what we have in our budget because I think we had 200,000 and it's going to be probably closer to 150 or less. So, John, the only thing I like to add is I, I, I kind of like people to understand when you talk about this coal and gas mineral tax, th this is an estimate that you got to come up with, this court's got to come up with a year before we even receive it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think the numbers you just went over is very important. And I tell you the reason why it's very important. This is the first, this is our third year budget this administration has been a part of. The previous two, I just had these numbers earlier. When they come in, they was anywhere between four million and two million short. That's why you've seen us scramble trying to get to, at the end of the year, trying to make budget. So, so the numbers John just told you is we're 70 some thousand to the good, which is outstanding for this county. And, uh, and our estimates, John was right on, and thank you for that. You know, 
just think, we cut over $2 million between coal and mineral last year for the projected numbers, which come within $70,000 of being right. Yeah. So those are pretty good estimates when you put everybody's knowledge together and try and stay very conservative with it instead of having another 2.2 that you're trying to scramble and figure out how you're going to cut and how you're going to fix this stuff. Last thing, and I hush, I promise, uh, people come up to me on the streets and and they put their hand on my shoulder and they say, you know, how's it going, Brian? I, if you know, got and, and I tell them, chick, sure. you know, okay. it, it's actually going really I'll try good. Chick. I mean, we've Don't really remember. done good things here this year in cutting There's their no revenue guarantee and of carryover. cutting so their expenditures to get everything in line. Just wanted to add that. Spend it. We'll see what we've got if we can give you anything extra. Um, as of right now, we're getting close to the end of the budget. You all probably need to go ahead and spend your road monies. That's what Chick was asking me about, getting his money that he didn't get to spend last year because he didn't spend it by June 30th. But I don't know whenever budgets come up as to whether or not how much we have to give money back. So if you want what you've got spent, spend it by June 30th. Possibility yeah, you may I lose it, it doesn't matter. It's not right. You gotta spend it this month or January. See what it was? You come up short and took eighty nine thousand out of mine. Cause I did, and I got three people. Right you weren't the only one. That, cause ain't black top of the road. You weren't the only one that went without getting carryover money. I Thank think you. both of those lost, and I think Hillman lost too. How much you lose him? Oh, it's a bunch, Chick. Uh, <laughs> it's a big loss. Dollars. I guess that's what frustrates me on the other hand is when we ask people for roads of what we can use free money for, we can't never get free money turned in to get used. If you don't use it, you'll lose it, Chick. Are we going to continue? Are ready to continue? Anything else? I've if I got everybody covered as to what I'm supposed to do, Frankie, can you remember? Okay. All right. Uh, commissioners and directors, comments. Jackie Darrell. Yeah, I got a few things here. Uh, started out about this afternoon today. We started getting a lot of reports for trees down in the area. Um, one called in while I was sitting here at the table was a State Road, and I called State and got tucked here. Two different Take places for State Road and, and Roads 3 and uh, 5 and, and 1. Uh, we had trees down and got the boys out to take care of them. And, uh, and then I ran into something. I went and checked on the road before I come here down on Rattlers Creek, got a call, and I wanted to see how bad it was because we had the crew come that way. We had some trees down on Coon Creek. But I got to give a compliment to CJ and 911. They were down there taking care of a tree, and that turned their men loose in District 3 to go into Coon Creek. And I, I didn't know they were doing that, and I got to give them a compliment for helping out with the keeping the roads safe in the, for the public. And, uh, and the road crews that stayed in the county boat was out doing a good job, and they jump on it quick. And another thing to clear up on the uh, bridge deal, one of the guys in the paper and his little comments there, it's, you know, I'm not a doctor and I don't understand everything about doctoring and I don't understand things about a lawyer, but I'd understand road work a little bit. And he's a claimant in his article that he wrote in there. We built a bridge down in uh, Elkhorn Creek and really built a dam. Well, we don't like things going wrong, but we had a bridge go out a while back down there. <clears throat> it washed out the end of it. And, uh, but there's procedures we got to follow to get state money, the 80-20 deal. The road was on the list of state roads, and we had to go through procedures to get that. And I got to you know, compliment the uh, commissioner, uh, Gary Reese, in Frankfurt again. He's, he's worked real and diligent with me trying to get this done. And we got the contract back last and sent it back to him about two weeks ago. And I, he called me up 515 this evening uh, on that and uh, another bridge. And that should be the money should be there any time to take and start that bridge. We turned the bridge out today, but we didn't build that for a permanent bridge. We put three drains in there, and we knew when the big waters came or it rained a lot, it would go out. It's common sense. But on the other hand, what are you going to let the people do? Wade through the creek or get a rope and swing across the creek branch or something? So we built a temporary thing to help the people get through, and people don't understand what they're talking about. Should 
shouldn't be mentioning things. And uh, we helped them people get through there real quick. And it wasn't no dam or a permanent bridge. It was a temporary thing so they didn't have to wade the creek to get out five families. And Mr. Gary Reese called me, uh, uh, as I said earlier, about a problem. We got at Blackberry on a bridge down there. And I'm trying to work, get them to move it up from 2022. They got to replace that bridge. And they moved it up a couple of times before. And they were trying to get them to move it back and give us the money. It's a real expensive bridge, a big bridge. And he's working to try his best to, to help us get the money to take care of the bridge of District 5. And uh, so uh, he's been real helpful. And uh, another thing you've said and discussed, and the 911 guy got up there was talking about the roads and the sentences in the future. As I know how people's moving out, District, basically it's District 6 and 5 and part of 3 look like together there. And as we lose our population, that's really going to grow in road mileage for that district. That's going to be a real nightmare for some road lots unless they give us more road lots in that district there. But we got to deal with whatever comes at us, but that's going to be a problem. Thank you for your time. Hey, Bob. Bobby. Judge, I'd just like to say, you know, where compactor for the land bill has been delivered and it's in service and we appreciate the court purchasing that for us and one more thing that doesn't really pertain to the court i don't guess but you, everyone knows that i'm the pastor of the paso free will baptist church on brushy creek the church burned in 2015 and we've been uh, rebuilding that and on behalf of the church they're going to have open house this Sunday, and they want me to invite the court and everyone is here to come to that, or everyone is listening and watching. And because they was some members of this court that has donated to help build that church back, and so we want to invite everybody to come Sunday at 11 o'clock to open house to the Paso Free Will Baptist Church. And thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby, anything good to eat over there? There will be a big dinner. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. And, and also, also uh, Joy Collins, his group, will be there to sing for us on Sunday. So uh, you might want to come to that. We'd love Thank to have you. Thank you, Bobby. Have anything? He must do it. I tell you, I didn't know. All right. Uh, County Attorney's Report, John Doug. All right. My county judge comments. I mean, we worked too hard and done a real good job without enough money for the departments and whatnot. But I'll try to stay in here and I'll be right at 89 when I get out of here if I'm alive two years from now. That's all the comments I have. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Roll call, please. Mr. Anderson. Bye. Yes. Master hey, Johnson. Master yes. Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes, ma'am. Master Barney and Judge Deskin. Yes.